Dr. Adelja, we're throwing around numbers as amateurs, and one of the numbers is 70% vaccination. To a pro like you, what does that statistic mean? It's really just a number that was picked. I think it's you, you want to have as high a number as possible. That's the goal that President sure. Biden has set for July 4th, to have 70% of adults getting one dose. But you have to remember that we're going to see benefits even if we don't make that, that target. And it looks like we're not going to make that target. We will see, we've already seen benefits in terms of cases, and we've seen extreme benefit when it comes to hospital capacity concerns. And you have to remember that it's not just that 70% that have gotten one dose that are contributing to this. It's also people who've got natural immunity from prior infection. So we are on a good pace, even if we don't meet, meet Joe Biden's goal of 70%. I think we should strive for it. We should, we should celebrate if we get to that. But I think we're, we're in good shape regardless. Do you think that businesses should require employees to get vaccinated at this point? I do think that this is something each business has to think about, depending upon what the, the function of their business are. I think, for example, healthcare industry companies, hospitals, nursing homes, that, that needs to be mandatory there. It should be a condition of employment. Other businesses should do all they can to encourage people to get to get vaccinated, make it as, as easy as possible, giving them days off, giving them enticements, also giving them privileges when they are fully vaccinated, meaning they don't have to wear their mask at work, they don't have to have their business travel uh, scrutinized. All of that, I think, would be important. Whether or not they need to fully mandate it, I think, you know, I'd lean towards yes, but I think that there's some, there's some uh, variability depending upon the company and the industry. Dr. Adalja, the question has to do with corporate America and, frankly, the global corporations. However, it also has to do with schools, especially as we head toward August, September, when people start going Going back uh, to the classroom, do you think that eventually we will move to a regime where a COVID shot, COVID-19 shot, will be alongside the measles, mumps, and tetanus? I, I definitely think that's where we're going. This is going to be a virus that's with us long after the public health emergency is ended. And this is going to probably be something that's a routine childhood immunization, where we don't think much of it, just the, how we don't think about tetanus or diphtheria or, or pertussis. And, and, it, and it's given to children at some period of time, and, uh, and it becomes normal. And it may not be these first-generation well, vaccines. It might be a second-generation vaccine that becomes the routine childhood one. Just one time or, I mean, I would think uh, that it's going to be something more like the flu vaccine where we get it every season. Is that more likely? No, I don't think that's likely. I think it's, we, it's too hard to, we can't play the time faster than it's going. We've got to follow people who've been vaccinated and see, are they getting breakthrough infections that are severe enough to land them in the hospital? Are they contagious? To know when there might be a need for an update. And remember, the flu, the flu vaccine is given every year because it gets updated, because it's a totally different vaccine. We don't. We know so far with all of these vaccines for COVID-19 that they work against the variants. There's no reason to necessarily update the vaccine. So there may be a booster that's needed, but it could be two years, it could be three years. It's impossible to tell that until we actually follow people who've been vaccinated and see what happens to them. Doc, we have, uh, according to the Johns Hopkins website here, 40 4.15% of Americans have been fully vaccinated, whereas 44.85% of people in the United Kingdom have been fully vaccinated. And yet there's a new outbreak, some are saying third wave in the UK. Is that all to do with the Delta variant or what's happening there? And could it happen in the US as well? So it does appear that the Delta variant is a more contagious version of this virus. And remember the Delta variant is the new name for what was once called the, the Indian variant, where it was first described. And it seems this is more contagious. We don't know if it's more severe, but we do know that vaccines, especially the Pfizer Moderna vaccines, having two doses of that is very protective. But also remember that our goal with the vaccine was to decouple cases from hospitalizations and deaths. So I'm less worried about cases occurring because we know the virus is there. We know they're unvaccinated populations. Hopefully, wherever the Delta variant appears, you're going to have high risk individuals heavily vaccinated, meaning people above the age of 65. 75% of all those are, are um, fully vaccinated in the United States. So we may see Delta variant kick up and cause cases and disruption, but I don't think it's gonna have the capacity in the US to be able to put a hospital into crisis because our high risk people are all, all fully vaccinated for the most part.